This is a mouldy Atari 2600 cartridge. And this label is torn and also shows some mould. I think it's fair to say that these original labels are beyond saving. So with some sticky photo paper and some inkjet spray varnishy stuff, we're going to design and print some new labels. And we're going to do it. Right now. Mark fixes stuff. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. You can get an instant quote on a variety of services or browse a library of talented makers' designs, add them to your cart and have them delivered directly to your door. These cartridges were in a lot I got off of eBay. I paid about 70 pence each for them, including shipping. I picked a couple out because I want to clean them up, approximately reproduce the labels and see how they look after. The black spotting on the Atari 2600 Defender cartridge label is quite bad, but it's nothing compared with the carnage wreaked on the Activision cart, Spider Fighter. You can just imagine how long these have languished in the damp, forgotten and unloved. Miraculously, both cartridges work, although they do take a hell of a wiggle. Not in my console, thank you. We'll start with Spider Fighter. Using my trusty hairdryer to heat the adhesive, we start to remove the old label. And it starts to come off quite easily. The adhesive is quite dry and gives readily to the heat. This label is for the International Edition, but I think we'll do a simple English version for the replacement. The old glue will need to be removed, and the cart shell and contacts cleaned as well. Let's see what horrors lurk inside. Surprisingly, it's just dusty. The PCB looks to be in good condition, although the contacts are really filthy. At least they're not corroded. This level of dirt usually builds up over time and coagulates into a caked on solid mess. Normal cleaning methods don't begin to move the crud and it sticks resolutely fast to the contact fingers. The next contender for the contact cleaning crown is Brasso Wadding. This is a specialised metal polish and is quite harsh on contacts if overused. That being said, it makes great progress in cleaning off the contacts, with only a few very stubborn contaminants remaining. At this point, continuing with the Brasso is overworking some of the contacts. Let's try another technique. This is a fibreglass pencil. Its tip is composed of hundreds of needle-like fiberglass shards. When you use a fiberglass pencil, be careful because the dust created is an irritant and the fragments can get lodged in your skin like splinters. Using the tip of the pencil, we wear down any oxidization or dirt on the remaining contacts.
the contacts are looking much better now and should put paid to any need to wiggle the cart in the console. With that done, I think the board is now okay. Turning our attention to the case, we need to carefully remove these spring-loaded inserts. For cleaning plastics, I recommend a cheap window cleaning solution. It really dissolves dirt and is much more effective than IPA on grime. Sometimes a stubborn patch of dirt might need an extra soaking. Aqueous based cleaners are more useful on non-greasy grit, grot and grime, but you do have to have some patience. Whilst we clean, I'd like to mention that this channel is driven by my amazing patrons. Patrons get advertisement free access and exclusive posts whilst helping me to create more content like this. You can become a patron too at patreon.com forward slash stuff. With the inside of the cart clean, we need to get this glue off. For that, we need isopropanyl alcohol. IPA, as it's more commonly known, is a solvent and does a good job of gently breaking down the old glue. But even when I'm chemically assisted, it's slow going. Eventually though, the hard work and perseverance pays off, and we're left with a shiny shell. Let's knock up a label and see how it looks. Starting with the dimensions of the label, I loaded in a picture of the international version of Spider Fighter. Despite the flaws in this price tag, this was the best example I could find of the screenshot in Google Images. My first task was to clean up the gameplay shot a bit. I wanted to then create a new layer with just that action shot on. I wanted it clean, but not too digital looking. With the gameplay shot looking pretty good, I set about making an orange overlay with fonts roughly matching the original, albeit this time I'd chosen to replicate the English market label for simplicity. Back in the early 80s, the fonts would have been applied by hand to the label designs, often using Letraset characters. This can make matching the spacing and feel of the text difficult with a computer package. This isn't the most accurate approach, but I do prefer the crispness of a recreated label over the fuzziness of a scanned label. Not that I had anything to scan anyway. It's more of a label in the style of the original. The fonts we ended up using were Century Gothic, Hammerfat and Mumbo SSK and they were a pretty accurate style match. I also manually tweaked some of the spacing because the font spacing was too large and regular to match the human designed label from 1982. easily fit four of these on a sheet, or maybe even five, so it's quite economical on sticker paper. I made a template for the Atari picture label cart so we can whiz through Defender. Again, I found art on the web. It's not exact, in fact it's not even the same cropping, but it's close enough. 
I'll upload these templates from my Patreon supporters in case any of them wish to use them. Let's see how this goes. The initial printing looked good, and once the ink had settled into the paper, it was quite promising. With the printed labels in hand, I headed out into the yard to use inkjet protection spray. I tried using this indoors before, and I almost coughed out a kidney with the house stinking for hours. As well as protecting the print from smudges and fingerprints, it also makes the colours pop nicely and adds UV protection to stop fading. I can't wait for it to dry now. Once the varnish was finally dried, it was time to examine our output. Whilst not a perfect match, I think that Spider Fighter is a good aesthetic replacement, and it captures the feel of the original English language version. Defender is a much closer match, and although the colours are way off, that could be due to yellowing or bleaching on the original as well. Even Atari weren't that consistent from cart to cart with their labels. To cut the labels out, we're going to use this rotary cutter. Unlike a craft knife or scalpel, these won't drag the surface of the paper. As a guide, we'll use this cork back steel rule. This will stop us slipping and scratching our labels. Cutting goes well, although maybe next time I'll make them slightly larger to account for trimming wastage. I round off the corners with a pair of craft scissors. This is the least accurate part of the job, and I wish I had a die cutter for the whole thing. But all in all, I'm pretty pleased with the result so far. I think this is appealing. Sorry. With a bit of to and froing for alignment, eventually I plump for the position and I stick the label down. Perhaps the label end could be slightly longer too, hmm. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with how this has turned out. It was a very mouldy cartridge that now looks less like a biohazard. It's not fooling anyone, but that wasn't my intention. Having also cleaned up the Defender cart, it's time to label that as well. I actually think that this is the best of the two. And the spray really does protect from smudging and marking. If it wasn't for my bad cornering skills, this would look amazing. When the newly labeled cards are placed in amongst their genuine counterparts, I don't think they look out of place at all. I'll link the paper and protection spray that I used below because I think this has come out a lot better than I expected. They compare really well with the originals in real life, even though the camera makes the darks look a touch lighter. But enough about me. Have you done this? What method did you use? And do you have any tips for me to get even better results? I think the process can be improved, but for now I'm really pleased. A massive thank you to my patrons appearing on the screen right now. These wonderful people make my videos possible. You can join them and see your name on the screen too by visiting patreon.com forward slash markfixesstuff. Thank you so much for watching. And you should definitely go and watch some of these other videos right now. Go on. Go on. Bye.